Cliff Moon, 2925 East Cape Corridor, East Cape Corridor, North Carolina. Uh, Mr. Mayor, uh, members of the City Council, Mr. Barry, Mr. Crone. Uh, at the last City Council meeting and at meetings prior to that, I have advocated first to have these meetings videotaped and second to have them subsequently broadcast on the Charter Government Channel. I have repeatedly commended this council for finding a fiscally prudent way to initiate videotaping and for posting the videos on the city website, which is being done. I stand before you tonight to urge you again to broadcast these meetings to the public on cable TV. I do not have time in the three minutes, to, uh, the, about three minutes, to reiterate all the reasons you should do this. I've said them sometimes before, but. And but while no one expects a Hickory a, a rebroadcast, excuse me, of the Hickory City Council to generate higher ratings than even a rerun of NCIS, it truly baffles me why any elected official wouldn't want to use every possible means and opportunity to educate the public and raise public awareness about the discussions and actions taken by the body to which he or she was elected. If you are proud of your service and believe, as I, as I know you do, that your actions are truly for the betterment of this city, how could you possibly not want more citizens to see and hear about it? And after some of the responses to the recent HDR article raising questions regarding conflict of interest, whether true or not, I would think that having a video record, record excuse me, going out to the public might prove advantageous as an added source of accurate information. I know that if I were sitting where you are tonight, I would welcome the video verification of what I had actually said leading up to my vote, and I would want it publicized as much as possible. In talking with Mr. Barry about this, he appropriately raised a concern about the quality of any TV broadcast, and I do say that is an appropriate concern. But having reviewed all the videotape meetings and having seen for myself the high definition quality of those recordings, I just have to say, all of you look really good on camera. You really do. Of course, you know, it's not how you look that really matters to us citizens. It's what you say and how you vote that affects our lives out here. So there is no need to improve the quality, in my opinion. Just let the people have the greatest possible opportunity to see it. By the way, the newspaper reported that staff and council decided it could not produce a high enough quality broadcast to portray the city in a positive light. I don't want to even begin to unpack that statement, but for the life of me, I do not recall an actual vote by council on that particular point. Perhaps I'm mistaken. Certainly could be. But I haven't found that. Thank you. May I continue? I've just got just a little bit more yet, Mr. Mayor. But I haven't found that vote in the minutes. And unfortunately, since you have deleted the previous YouTube videos, and I say this very hesitantly, but I did look at it. I'm not an attorney, uh, and everybody knows that. But there is a potential violation of the North Carolina Freedom of Information Act and the state's public disclosure law. And I brought that law with me, so I'd really appreciate Mr. Cronin sometime giving me information about whether that's accurate. But I'm unable to view that record for myself because of those deleted uh, videos at this point. Finally, Mr. Berry stated in the paper, quote, it's not a matter of whether we could, meaning broadcast the meetings, it's a matter of whether we should. Mr. Berry, members of the council, as to whether you should, this citizen's answer is absolutely yes. Thank you very much. Joe Grant. Joe Grant, 812 4th Street Drive, Northwest. Uh, Mr. Mayor, Council Member, I understand there's a departmental report tonight on the legal opinion regarding the recent conflict of interest matter. Aside from that discussion, I would ask the council to also consider the public perception standards and aspects associated with conflicts of interest that are there to ensure the highest level of transparency that the public deserves. I don't believe anyone thinks that conflicts of interest necessarily mean illegal activity, nor do I believe that conflicts of interest are necessarily limited to financial matters. But was it a conflict of interest when Ms. Patton voted to approve her daughter's application for a first-time homebuyer's grant? 
and was it a conflict of interest when Mr. Seaver voted to approve similar consent agendas and agenda items involving his son? Was it a conflict of interest when Mr. Meissner voted to reject rental property task force recommendations while his property was in violation of city nuisance codes? I would like to commend Mr. Lell for recusing himself during the discussion and subsequent votes years ago about the business improvement district tax. He stated that he owned commercial property inside the bid district and thought it would be inappropriate to participate. I would also like to commend the mayor for recusing himself back in January regarding an issue with the city's land development code and what he saw as a potential conflict involving his sign company. But wasn't it a conflict of interest when the mayor's sign company provided the signage for the city-funded FBO building without making those business interests publicly known? And wasn't it a conflict of interest when Mayor Wright failed to publicly acknowledge his own rental property interests prior to voting to reject the rental property task force recommendations? What I do know is this. My confidence in this council's ability to enforce its own conflict of interest ordinances are sadly directly proportional to its willingness to actually identify said conflicts. Ms. Jett. Go ahead and say that first thing. <laughs> Goliath? Almost. Kalila. <laughs> Good evening, Council. My name is Kalila Jett, and I've been before you before a couple years back in reference to the pools. Well, I'm here today in concern of, I started a, an organization, a basketball team, um, to add more programming to Parks and Rec. But in doing that, um, to practice, we were not, we are not allowed to hold any practices in Hickory Parks and Rec. So I come in here tonight to address that issue because it hasn't, I don't see a clear reason as to why a Parks and Rec would reject a professional organization that we have put together in order to make more programming in our community. So um, I've done several uh, programs in the community. I've done a STEM program. I was a lifeguard also at the pool. And um, I continue to do these things for free at volunteer. Uh, I've done the successful program happened uh, in 95 when I was uh, over the step program at the Brown Pen, and I came back when I moved back to Hickory in 07 and started another one. And I did it for about two years, and then I moved on into the school system. Well, this year I decided to uh, take on basketball because it's a big interest of my daughter's. But um, even though I'm not coaching, I manage the team. And, and the biggest hardship that I found is finally just the practice. And I feel if we have a gym right in our community that's convenient for everyone, I understand the reason why we can't use it. So I'm coming to Hebrew City Council tonight to see if there's something you could do to help us. And um, my team came tonight, and I have uh, Deja, Corey, Victoria, Tatiana, and Samantha all here with some of their parents to support because we um, are a good organization. We played in about five or six tournaments this season. And um, to prepare for next year, we would like some convenient gym location. So that's my <coughs> issue and concern for tonight. And I hope that you can you know, take it and address it and see if we can come up with some solutions to help our organization. I appreciate you coming. I appreciate you young people, and I appreciate the collaborative way you've approached that issue. Asking the people to work together to find a solution. April Hill. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm here. Excuse my voice, but this came in case you had heard this. My voice is shot. But also, we also have an AAU team. And we also are in the same situation as this a collider as far as practicing. We have nowhere to go. But now the, our, our, um, the ground pen will be going out. We, we, my children participate in all the activities, everything that we participate. But when we come together as a basketball team, we can't go inside the gym. And the task is there. And that's just 
we were concerned about that. We were going to turn our, our children forward to go there and uh, participate in their activities or even hire them when, when it's time for us to be able to fight this and replace them. Right? Because we can't be there, but and when we go out, our name is Hickory Swag, so we represent Hickory. We do a good job of that. Group young ladies, a lot of them were not here on vacation and stuff. Um, but we will be starting back up in August. And we would like a place to, to participate and also call our, set, call our home. And also, when we do participate in all the activities they have, there are things they call for our young people to be there. But when it's time for us to need them back, they don't return that service because they say we are 18, we can't, we're not allowed to practice there, but we can pay taxes there. So it's really become an issue, and we just ask that you just, you know, help us resolve this. Mr. Larry Fennel. Good evening, Mr. Mayor, Mr. Barry, Mr. Crone, and City Council members. I was at the City Council meeting a couple of meetings ago when there was a long discussion about the rental spaces on Union Square for the businesses to set up tables and chairs for customers who were downtown spending their money at the businesses located on Union Square. I will tell you that I've had some difficulties on Union Square because of all the tables and chairs and all the people uh, who are frequenting those businesses. So I requested and met Attorney Dula and one of the public works uh, supervisors down in Union Square to find out what we could do to get me directly from the railroad track at the crosswalk beside the old train station to Fred's Pharmacy, which I visit on a regular basis for medication that I purchased from Fred's and supporting the downtown business. I requested a mobility specialist that came from Winston-Salem to Hickory to go downtown with me to look at Union Square, and she was a little bit set back because of all of the barriers and obstacles that had to be overcome to get me from the crosswalk to Fred's Pharmacy. There is no direct pathway. And I asked the city to remove and place a different surface that could easily be followed keep, to keep me from the obstacles that are there in the way. I have to ask the question. After the city council discussed and made the decision to charge the $25 fee for the businesses to have designated spaces in front of their businesses on Union Square for their patrons, I would like to know, is that $25 being collected? If it is being collected, then how is it being used by the city and what fund does that money go under? Three minutes. Thank you. Can I have another couple of minutes? Sure. I will find out. I would like to see something in writing that shows where that money goes to in our city budget that is being collected by the city from these businesses and that the city will put forth all efforts to make sure 
that there are not barriers in the way that keep citizens with disabilities or any other citizen from being unable to frequent the businesses that you are trying to grow and foster on Union Square. So I hope that the response will be forthcoming and that you can show me where that money is going and that that money is truly being collected from these businesses and how it's being used to benefit the city of, of Hickory and the citizens of our city. Thank you. Uh, I realize we're going to have a discussion on conflict of interest, and uh, but unfortunately I see that people have been leaving this meeting who only heard Mr. Brannick's comments. I just want to assure everyone here that to the best of my knowledge and belief and with the advice of counsel, I believe I have never been guilty of a conflict of interest in this office. Dr. Joseph Inglefield. Thank you, Mayor. It's great to be here. Hickory City Council has ignored the health and wellness of our citizens. It is time to replace city leaders when they choose to ignore the findings of validated scientific studies like the Gallup Healthway Wellbeing Index that ranks us the fifth most miserable area in the country. It is a charade to ride on the backs of nonprofits to the title of All American City. Uninspired citizens wander our streets due to lack of jobs. At 10%, we have the second highest unemployment rate in the state. We need solutions, not an attitude that nothing can be done. The city must respond to these national surveys in a meaningful way. The failure, of ma the failure to maintain parks and recreational facilities throughout Hickory during the 12-year tenure of the mayor is especially destructive to the health and well-being of the citizens of Hickory. We need jobs, not excuses. We need to bulldoze through the lack of transparency in city council decisions. City council and staff have not followed the spirit and letter of public record, law, and see general statute 132. Public information should be open and accessible on a city website permanently with all public city meetings on cable TV. City leaders and staff must truthfully file conflict of interest forms in a legible manner on a yearly basis according to the law. City staff must insist the council do so legally and in good faith. We need to fill positions on independent boards and commissions without delay, free of nepotism and cronyism. These positions are supposed to provide independent guidance. Should, these should also be subject to the same conflict of interest requirements. No new taxes should be levied until citizens can readily accept and carefully review projects and budgets, including the $80 million Inspiring Space Plan. We need evidence-based plans with full, meaningful public participation, not pet projects. Stop reading separate funds that belong to the citizens of Hickory. I want to encourage public input. We've heard some good input tonight. And dialogue with the citizens of Hickory, all the citizens, as many voices are not being heard. <laughs> the local economy has suffered greatly under this mayor, yet he takes no responsibility for this decline. Our stale leaders have been in office for too long. <clears throat> it is time for fresh new ideas. We need term limits. We need inspiring leaders to inspire citizens. As a local medical doctor and community leader for the past 25 years, I'm announcing my candidacy for the position of Mayor of Hickory. I'm ready to lead Hickory in a new direction. I ask the citizens of Hickory to register to vote and to vote for me, Dr. Inglefield, for mayor. Thank you. And Jay Franklin Davis.
Good evening, ladies and gentlemen of the council. My name is Jay Franklin Davis. I live in Eagle, North Carolina, 715 First Avenue, Place Southeast. I also have a uh, home in the community. First of all, I'd like to say that on July 11th, there was a program that was at the Lone Rock College. It was called The House I Live In. That was a very good program, and it was more or less national. And we could actually have used this, the information that that we got on this to help better our community. And I, the, the gentleman who was in charge of it, he said that the police chief, he had a, something else he had to do, and I didn't see any of our city council there. And I think that if there's anything that we can do, any tools that we can use to help better our community and our city, I think we all should go and do it. The next, uh, the one question I have is, it's funny, uh, recently, I noticed on the committee, on the different committees, I have an interest on becoming a member of the Community Relations Council. I looked at one in particularly, and I, I spoke with a uh, city council member, and with, uh, with all of you being at our disposal, so I, I called one and I, I expressed my interest. And all of a sudden, I noticed that one, it, was, it wasn't actually 9-13, it was 9-11-2011. And all of a sudden, tonight, I see two people who have been nominated for that, that board who hasn't even been here and who hasn't, doesn't show an interest in it. All of you know, my family has been a big part of Hickory. And I've been here most of my life. And how can someone nominate someone who's only been here a few days who really doesn't know what the community needs? <coughs> I'm, what, I'm asking again, what is it? Why is it? Are you afraid? What are you afraid of? And I would like, after the city council meeting, for someone, one of, one of my city council members and even the mayor, if you would please, answer this for me. I've been through the city college. I got a key to the city, and it seems like it still doesn't open up any doors for me. Please answer this question with me, to me, for me, soon. And and I plan on volunteering on other boards if only giving me the chance. We all in this together. Remember, I keep saying that we're all in this together. Thank you for listening to my open words. And I'll be waiting for an answer at the city council meeting. Thank you. With motion to approve the minutes of the meeting.